so blessed to be here uh, right outside of Gallup in Pinedale out in nature and uh, bringing some music and collaborating with with y'all here in the Navajo Nation we feel just so honored to 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 be here and share these this this Labor Day with you all and uh, I'm here with Watson Billy uh, also known as Watts here in the Gallup area of New Mexico and just wanted to uh, share with our Soul Force audience, with our music meditation medicine group. We gather every uh, once once a month on Monday evenings online, and just have you share a little bit about what you're doing uh, using music as a healing force and creativity uh, here in the Navajo Nation. So, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Rock and Life, because this this just sounds so inspiring and amazing. Yeah, so uh, again, like you said, my name is Watson Bailey Jr. Um, my friends and family call me Watts, so since we're now friends and family, you are welcome to call me Watts. Um, 2016, I started an organization, more or less an initiative program for suicide awareness and prevention called Rock in Life. And the whole uh, motto behind that was to share how you rock in life and express you rock in life. And the whole thing about it is not just about rock and roll music. It was more or less about using music as a healing tool, uh, music, art, and talent, um, using that as an self-expression for healing, for uh, empowerment, for motivation, and mm. encouragement for those who play music, for those who are artistic or talented in different ways. God gave us uh, talent mm. to use, and a lot of us, we feel um, pushed down or we feel, you know, we're not capable or we're not good enough yeah. to portray this music, this art or talent. And the one thing that we love is to express ourselves in words that we cannot say, things that we cannot, you know, show or do, 
music art and talent are the things that we can express for our inner self to feel love we can feel ourselves you know feeling great about ourselves and we really feel good about ourselves so that was to use uh, for healing because it, it all goes back to um, alcohol addiction substance abuse and um, depression mental illness that I've gone mm. through in my years of you know living in this this mess of living in a rut mm. a lot of us know when we're driving on a muddy road we're driving in a muddy rut we can't go left we can't go right and it feels like there's no way to go but down further into the mud and you know we with the music we're able to put it in four wheel drive flip it around and turn around and you know and one of the songs i write is never too late to turn around mm. and you know there's many times in my past where i felt like i wasn't good enough and the alcohol and the drugs weren't doing it the friends that i had at the time weren't doing it because when the party ends and the lights turn off you're just there by yourself dealing with your depression dealing with your mental illness dealing with all the stuff that you got yourself in, the muddy rut that you're in. And I remember one of the times where I was intoxicated and sitting on a hill, there was a man talking to me and telling me, you know, um, this is not the life you should be living mm. and turn yourself around. And that really, you know, stuck in my heart. Like I can still think about that. I can still feel that moment sitting on the hill talking to this person, his words, what he was saying, and uh, even the evening, because the, the sun was going down, you still see the, the sky, the birds and whatnot. And I remember through those times, music was what got me through mm. those tough times. Music, writing music, playing the guitar. Uh, I was fortunate enough to learn how to play the guitar and play it, you know, where I felt, you know, it's speaking to me. And writing those songs and playing the guitar and melodies you know it really helped me through a lot of time so the musical stuff that i, I created with rock and life was to do the same thing and bring it out to others and bring it to different locations in the tribal communities and non-tribal communities find a, re a a venue and build the stage being music bring the uh, i had extra instruments so that if nobody had the instruments they could still come up and use ours and i would just say this stage is yours come up and play something and it was a it was a tough because some of the community members didn't want to play or they were they felt shy they felt like they weren't good enough and we just gave them encouragement tell them this is not a talent show this is not where we're going to judge you who's good and who's not yeah, you know, we're all going to come together and encourage you because you see different things that, you know, even as a musician, I'll see someone play and I'm like, wow, why didn't I think of that? You know, yeah. it's like, man, this person is so artistic or compare yourself. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's a and, dead end. Yeah. And because when you do that with others, I mean, like you see like big musicians like Metallica, you you think that they're perfect, but you can tell they make mistakes themselves. And and I always tell people that making mistakes is part of life because Amen. Uh, we pick ourselves up. So we learn the storm. We learn the strength we go through the storm. And we know that we can get out of it again. And we have the strength to get to it. And for those who are afraid to make that mistake, they're not learning anything. And I'm just saying, make those mistakes. And even when I play the guitar, I make a lot of mistakes. And I get embarrassed. And I feel that in my in my skin and my bones, you know, when I make mistakes, I can feel like everybody's watching me. But then I, I, I remember to close my eyes, let it flow, because, you know, it's, it's not about the data coming through. It's about the heart, you know, playing it for you rather than being technical about the music. So a lot of times, you know, I, I get I get embarrassed and I, I get scared and um, I do get shy sometimes when I was younger. I was known for being shy. You know, I yeah. was high school the whole time. I never talked with anybody. I was so shy. Um, and just by learning to speak and talk and making mistakes, not saying the right words, and and just learning from how I can build relationships through that. So the music part with Rock and Life was to encourage people to come out mm -hmm. and build the stage and play wherever whatever it was and and i would tell them you know as long as it was positive expressions because we can all 
make negative expressions as well and you know keep going down that muddy road and we're it's easier sometimes right <laughs> exactly i mean we could say things I, even when i was going through my time i would say things and write you know music that was just going down that same destruction yeah. and it's like well when we're building a foundation we want it to be built and strong rather than you know built on glass because yeah. you don't have a foundation when you do that and so yeah 2016, I, I built that that initiative program and just started going from here to there. Started with Gallup, took it to Zuni, a Pueblo. I took it to Shiprock, took it to Crown Point, uh, Pine Hill, which is just different locations out to the Navajo Nation as well as Pueblo communities and Apache um, locations in New Mexico. Amazing. And I started taking it to different locations outside of the tribal areas as well. Took it to Albuquerque, took it to Alamogordo. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, and the whole thing was about um, suicide awareness and prevention. Um, showing that music can help us through these tough times. And some of us musicians, and if you guys know, uh, being artistic and talented, we dedicate a lot of those times for those we lost, for the tough times that we've gone through, um, the person we used to be, the person we are now, and we celebrate life going forward. So we've lost a lot of people through our, our lifetimes, friends, family, um, and people we didn't know, but we connected mm. with. And we, we build that and we integrate them into our songs, our music. A lot of times when we play our music, we think of those. You yeah. know, and we know it's, it's healing. With me, I, uh, you know, it's not like I play sad songs. It's more or less I play sad uh, songs that remind me of those times, but I know that I can get out of it. Yeah. And it reminds me of those. So wow. that's how I feel like, you know, with rock and life, building music as a healing tool is one of the great things in our lifetime. Yeah, it's such a, I mean, just from talking to you and hearing you now, I can see how uh, it, this is such a, uh, empowering people, a thing for, for young people. And I imagine all, all kind of people here in New Mexico who can um, face the courage that it takes to go up and kind of put themselves on the line. Like you were saying, you were really shy and now you've taken to the point where you're, you're getting up on stage and you're encouraging others to do that for a purpose. Exactly. You yeah. know, not just, you know, it's, it's not just to show off, but you're bringing out people's individuality. You're bringing out people's creativity. And I really believe that we're all artists, even, even if we're not professional artists, we're all, we all we've all been endowed with that spark of creativity from the creator exactly. so it's um it's something that to be able to bring that out in people it's no wonder that uh people will people will be changed by that you know people will have hope in life uh after having an experience like that so yes i want to encourage everyone to support the support rock and life and and really f i hope this can really grow and you know, really uh, touch more and more people. Tell yeah. us some of the stories of, of, you know, what maybe maybe some of the people who never really got up or performed and doing stuff and really kind of face, because facing, I think facing our fears and facing, having courage is one of the things that really um, give, obviously gives us confidence to have hope in life, to have, yeah. have a sense of meaning and like value, self-value and worth, <laughs> self-worth. Yeah. That like, yeah, I can actually get through these tough times, whatever the, whatever I'm facing, you know. Yeah. Well, there's several stories that I can talk about. Um, one being the idea of coming on the stage and playing, you know, in front of people, in front of others that you don't know. And for me, I learned it was easier to play with in front of people you didn't know rather than playing in front mm -hmm. of people you did know because they knew you. And because I... I, I was a shy guy, and I'm still a shy guy. I can still be shy, and my mind is always thinking. It's overthinking all the time. And I'm like, if I made a mistake and they know me, then they know I made a mistake. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, here it comes, and everything just crashes down. And Worry about what they're going to say. Yeah, and, and I, yeah. I feel that spotlight on me, and yeah. I feel, feel everybody's eyes on me and, yeah. and through my soul. But there was one instance where... Uh, well, several instances. One being, I was in Dulce, New Mexico, which is a, a Hickory Apache nation up north in New Mexico. 
they had a reggae band playing. It was a huge reggae band, and they were playing in front of audience. Huge stage. They had a great uh, mic system and a great speaker system. And one of the breakdowns, they were doing a, re a reggae, you know, a Skank riff or whatever, yeah. yeah. And without lyrics, he was saying, all right, anybody from the community, come up on stage. And if you got something to say, there's the time. Well, the grooving back there. And yeah. I could feel the weight on my legs. My body and my mind says, go for it. But my legs were so heavy. I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I want to. But there were so many people out there. There was like about maybe 500 people out in the audience. Yeah. And I was thinking, one guy went up there and he sang. I was like, well, he was doing his thing. He was trying to sing the reggae. I don't, I, don't, I can't sing reggae. So I was like, well, what am I going to do when I go up there? But it was a solid beat. It was going back and forth. You yeah. know? And I was like, I, I think I can probably bust the flow like a rap. So All I was right. like, okay. And my feet were getting heavier and heavier. Yeah. I was walking closer and closer. I was like, I... I I don't know if I have time. And the guy's like, okay, nobody else. And I knew that moment was that. And my body felt so heavy, but I knew I had to get there. So I started running. I ran on stage, got up the stairs, got up behind the singer. And he's like, yeah, come up, come up. And everybody was laughing, like, come on, yeah, let's go. And it was so scary looking out for everybody. But as soon as I got there, I felt the love, you know. And mm. I was like, I'm already past this wall of fear. Might as well just it. go for it. Yeah. So I started, you know, I have this uh, song that I write in my head, and it goes with some beats. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a rapper or anything, but it, it works yeah. better with the flow. Yeah. So I started doing that, and everybody was like, "Yeah!" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm singing in front of everybody!" <laughs> and I was just like, "What?" You know, and I, I forgot what I was gonna say. Then I just started freestyling, and it was working. You know, yeah. and I was like, "This." This whole spot of being scared is gone. Yeah. I'm already here. Might as well continue. And I felt sometimes the fear of the the wall of fear is so thick, we can't get past yeah. it. But once we do, we're like, wow, this is this is better than what we even thought. You know, we haven't even gone there and our mind over things. The other part was there was this you little broke kid. Through. Yeah, <laughs> and there was this kid in seventh grade in Gallup during my third annual rock in life i think which was probably 2018 or so and he was scared to come up on stage but he did um karaoke to country songs and he wanted to sing he was being, a navajo kid um here? i think yeah. he was hispanic hispanic kid yeah but yeah he was yeah. from the local school there yeah and he was being bullied and for each of my rock in life events i would bring t-shirts kind of like this yeah and you know give them to them as an incentive to come yeah. on stage i didn't pay him it wasn't yeah. you know if anything like that but here's a t-shirt yeah thank you for coming him. on stage yeah. yeah and we kept encouraging him. you know this is not a talent <laughs> show we're not trying to tell you you know you're good or not yeah you're not going to win a prize you know you already won it by getting on stage yeah, man. so finally he got on stage he grabbed the yeah. microphone and he was looking down so scared we played a song and he sang over it, and, you know, he was kind of like started off shy and slow and timid and low volume. And at the middle of the song, he started getting louder and louder. And then all of a sudden, he had the microphone up, and he was singing, like, just looking up to the sky, singing. I don't remember what song he was. It was country, so I don't, I don't really listen to country, but uh, I'm sure it was a good song. But he was really having the time of his life. He was singing away, and he says, can I sing one more song? I said, yeah. So he sang one more song, and he everybody was clapping and you yeah. know, you know, encouraging him, and you can tell he felt really good about himself. He got off stage, we got other people to come on stage and play, and then thirty minutes later, he's like, "Can I, can I sing again?" <laughs> so yeah, sure. And we we made more time for him. We told yeah. the other band members, yeah. "Can we like give him another yeah. five more minutes?" So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Came on stage, did the same thing, and then another thirty more minutes. He's like, "Can I, can I play again?" <laughs> like, yeah, sure. And, and That's th beautiful. that was probably the busiest uh, rock and life event I ever had because I went up from five thirty to nine o'clock at the mall and Gallup. It closed at nine, so I had yeah. to tell people, you know, we're done. We're done. Yeah. Mall's closed, and I wish we could have more time, but um, he was really feeling the, the time of his life at that time, and just him getting past that wall of fear. And going out and performing in front of everybody, you know, he, it, it looked like he enjoyed himself. And I think that's where it's at, you know, where 
um, we we put too much in our minds yeah. about putting ourselves down. What are people going to think of us? And you know, how are we going to sound? And am I going to make mistakes? And yeah, but that's really how we learn and how we grow and how we b- become more true to who we really are. No. Yeah, and I I feel that you know he was one of the ones that I can use to encourage others, you know, because there were some adults, even my age or older, that were still shy. Like, no, I don't want to... When you come to the Navajo Nation, our, our, our culture is very timid, you know? I mean, you'll get a table, and someone will stand in front of you two feet away, and they'll, like, look at each other, and you ask them, you ask them, you know? And even though I'm like, I'm right here, you can ask me, you know? But they're, they're not comfortable to approach mm. you just yet. And a lot of that goes a long way from how we were taught. You know, not to look at somebody in their eye, you know, not approach someone because it's considered rude or it's considered, mm. you know, this and that. So a lot of it, the way we grow up, you know, it's like um, we, we put that door and shut the door on us right away. And I remember when I was growing up as a kid, writing poems, you know, that was about the true stuff about me. You know, my parents would be like, why are you writing stuff like that? You shouldn't be writing stuff like that. And, you know, at that time... Still, depression and mental illness and suicide is a stigma. It's still a stigma to this day, talking about these issues. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about real-life issues about yourself. People still look at it, even in culture-wise, whether it be um, Native Americans or, you know, Hispanic cultures. It's still stigma because you talk about it. It's like we're just inviting it in. We're inviting the spirit in. But we got to understand that the spirit's already in us. And it's mm. already here. How are we going to fight it? How are we going to combat you gotta it? Acknowledge it. And yeah, I mean, because right? it's like yeah. we we just put it behind us in the closet, yeah. and that monster's going to come out when it's dark, you know. And we can't just keep closing that door and not talk about that door, you know. That door, Pretend, we gotta, yeah. We we have to open that door and chase that spirit up. Wow. Um, so growing up, it was tough living that age, and I know families right now are still living that age right yeah. now, and. Our children are still growing up like that. And I've worked with prevention uh, companies before as a prevention specialist talking about making decisions, self-image, because it all starts back from when you're young. And catching them at a younger age, like a mid-school time or even later in the elementary time, learning them where's the decisions coming from. Who's making decisions for you? Is it your parents? Is it your friends? And are they good decisions? Are they bad? Are Mm -hmm. you influenced by them? Because a lot of times when you ask them, are you ready to go? And they're like, well, let me ask, am I ready to go? Yeah. You know, it's like, well, are you capable of making those decisions? Because if you're not confident making those decisions, we need to find how we can break that cycle. And then the other part is self-image where we can look through the mirror and say, I'm good enough. You know? Yes. Because there's times where we look in the mirror and we're like, oh my gosh, I just hate how my face looks. You know, now we wear masks to prevent, you know, illness. But in the past, we still wear masks back in the day just because I didn't like the way I looked. You know, we'd be wow. taking selfies, trying to get the right light or get it from a higher <laughs> angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And try to get that, the wrinkles out or whatnot, get it from a lower angle because you can't really see who yeah. I am. Because nowadays you go to social media, look at somebody, and it's like, well, you don't look like your profile picture. You know, because we still can't look through the mirror nowadays. Yeah. And I remember I was in a mid school talking and some of the kids were kind of, you know, they didn't want to listen to us. Yeah. And we were talking about self image. And it really got quiet when I started talking about self image because I says, how many of you grew up with parents or grandparents that told you you were not good enough? And half the room raised their hands. Wow. And it got quiet. It even got to the point where people started crying. And I said, wow. this is tough to talk about. And I understand why you don't want to listen to us right now. Because we're talking about deep things that nobody wants to hear. And I says, we're talking about image, what you mm. are. I can look at you right now and tell you you guys are good enough. And we got to fill our gas tank with positive things rather than negative stuff. Because by the end of the day, that gas tank is empty. And you don't want to deal with anything else after that. Yes. And that class was so, like, I mean, after that moment, that, that turned around and it really opened their eyes because it was like, we're not just here to just point a finger at you and scold you for, mm. you know, making these bad decisions, but you got to understand where these decisions are coming from. Wow. Is it because of bad self-image? 
Yep. Then it all comes back with music, expressing yourself mm-hmm. with music. You know, because yes. music plays in languages that we don't understand just yet. The until language you pick of the heart. Exactly. And those who don't play music, they don't understand what we're talking about. And yes. how they learn themselves. Well, on that note, can we... Uh, let's, let's do one of your songs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's the name of this song? This next song, or the song that we're going to play, is called Blue Rain. And this is, I wrote this back in 2003 or so. Well, I started working on it like three years prior, but finally, you know, finished it in 2003 and went to the studio and recorded it. All right, let's do it. So this is Blue Rain. Mm -hmm. 